we're going to start in two minutes. So, um, okay. when you go out to get your daily shopping or shoplifting, uh, Jake, is it really quiet or is it kind of almost normal or what's it like up north? Well, I don't know how to walk our dog, but when I have, it's pretty much dead. Like, only a couple people in cars, if that. I mean, like, Last week, before they declared the official lockdown, when I was still commuting to work on the train, normally the train on the way there and back, it's packed. You can't really get a seat most of the time. Same on the tram in Nottingham, where I work. But in the last week, when I was still there, it was just me on my own train. <laughs> like, I've never seen it that quiet before. It's like, I mean, obviously we can't go out now, but it would have been a good time to shoot an apocalyptic film. Yes, of course. <laughs> And you probably wouldn't need to seek permission to shoot in front of just about anywhere. You can just go and do it. Just <laughs> <run> around. <laughs> yeah, as long as you don't get caught by any police. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I know. That's good. Well, that's good. It's it's like new every day here is like New Year's Day. It's just completely dead in London. I live in West London. It's just like completely crazy. Although just outside my window here, some guys, some builders were putting in a new lamp post. <laughs> big banging and we think that's a bit random anyway <laughs> but anyway those of you joining please let us know your city your country that you're joining from some of you already have and also writer director producer filmmaker whatever just so we get an idea and remember you can ask a question by typing it into the screen um and i'm going to ask the first few questions here jake we'll get going now Is yep. that all right you? that's fine with me yeah so um, how did you get started in filmmaking? Oh, that goes back basically in 2010, probably maybe even before. I always play with Lego. I still have some on my shelf now, which I just have for a collection, obviously. <laughs> but I used to love Lego and whatnot, and I wanted to like bring it to life in a way. So I started stop motion animations on my own. And I did loads of those by myself and started doing more and more. But eventually, me and my group of friends were like wait we could use this video camera I got bought for Christmas and with the software I've been using to make stop motions which was Windows Movie Maker at the time we could put on sound effects and make action movies and short films and stuff so our first film was just in my garden with some like toy bright guns shooting at each other we didn't even know about like we didn't even do second takes of things so we didn't even cut out like the mistakes or anything and just released it and then as you can expect, a lot of people released some, it was online, angry comments or mocking us for it. But then we were just like, eh, and just kept going. <laughs> so how many of these short films did you make? Uh, from then till now, it's well over 300. And it's what? probably, yeah, probably a lot more. There's been, there's quite a few in this sort of 2010 to 11 area of our lost films where we didn't back up footage back then or know how to or have the storage. So there's a lot of films from back then that we've lost, but we know that there was definitely over 10 we've lost probably from then alone that were like 20 minute plus films. Wow. But since then we've made over 300 shorts or more. Wow, that's amazing, that's impressive. And um, uh, so you said you've got a day job, is that a film job or is that another it's, job? It's in video production. I work at a company called Vpoint TV. We do production videos, corporate stuff, and then a lot of TV adverts. Have you heard of Hillary's at all? <laughs> Make like curtains and blinds and whatnot, do most of their stuff, and then a lot of stuff for the NHS. You know, but I, I, I haven't, uh, Jake, but then I, I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, <laughs> but anyway, please, please don't judge me on that. No, that's fine. I mean, we're more into films, aren't we? So, uh, um, anyway, so, uh, how did you get the job in the video production company then? Well, the funny story is, have you, are you familiar with Kurt Jones? Yes, and, I know Kurt Jones, yeah. Yeah, well, basically, the Mark Milson Foundation had me for an interview uh, back last year, and they didn't think I was quite suitable for what they could see with the work, because they thought I was maybe too advanced to be on set making tea and whatnot. I was like, I was like, oh, thank you, but at the same time, I won't mind that, but hey-ho. But they were trying to help me get work still. But because of where they found and whatnot, they weren't ready for me just yet. And I thought, instead of just waiting around, I should probably be doing something. 
So I looked at places locally while I'm still here instead of moving to London just yet and realised that in Nottingham and Lincoln, there's a lot of, not film production, but video production where I could at least be doing editing or camera and something similar enough without, you know, spending time doing something that's not going to build skills every day. So then I found a bunch of companies that I really like the look of working for. I've done interesting things, not just any old company and just found ones that had job apply and just applied for a bunch. And then they got back to me like a day later after the, I sent the email and then a day later I started. <laughs> so it was very quick. And, and that is Craig Jones's company. Is that right? Oh no, that was a viewpoint in Nottingham. Because oh. They were trying to find me work, Kurt Jones, but because of uh, the situation, a lot of places not, really looking for anything just yet i thought there'd be such a long wait and i thought it'd just be wasted time if i wasn't doing something okay yeah 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 okay well kirk jones came to our rain dance training courses many years ago in the 90s actually before he started his amazing career as a filmmaker and as, as you know hey uh, we're going to interrupt you just for a sec um yeah. jake uh dub's fanatics show weird name ask if i wanted to submit a short film comedy how would i go about it what guidelines do we need to adhere to um shall i answer that uh from a festival point of view jake oh uh, yeah you just submit to raindance go to raindance.org and follow the cookie crumbs to festival we love comedy shorts at raindance uh that's our festival and there are many, many film festivals around the world. Look at their website, filmfreeway.com, uh, to uh, figure that out. Um, and we're we'll just to interrupt you again, uh, Jake. Negation is joining us from Germany um, and whatever. Okay, so another question for you here, Jake. When you decide you want to make a short film, mm -hmm. Walk us through, I, I, okay, I want to make a short film. How, what happens next? Do you come up with the idea first or the people first or whatever? Uh, it works so many different ways. Like sometimes I've looked at a prop or object and gone, that would make such a cool idea for a film. I'll use an example. Last year in the summer, we made a short film called The Devoted, which is this cult from World War II that was created by accident by the Nazis as like a last ditch effort of super soldiers but then it turned wrong on them. And I got the idea by looking at these white prop masks we had, and I was just like, those look so scary under that like, lighting. What if we had a short film where everyone was sort of wearing those? And then me and my friend Mike, who I make all the films with, would bullet point, like, oh, then that could happen, then we just get ideas coming off it. And then from there, we'll write the scripts, send them to everyone, just keep refining it to a point where we're happy. And then I'll go ahead and organise cast, crew, actors for it, the location. And then before you know it, we're shooting. I mean, this... All our short films are very quick turnaround. Like sometimes we can go from a script to the full film in like a week or two. And what is your typical budget of a short film? It always varies. Most of them are zero. We managed to build up such like a network of friends, um, actors and people we know where we can do everything without ever spending anything because they love the film as much as we do. So we've got a lot of locations that will just let us film because they know who we are. We've got our friend John who his dad has a farm. So we always use that farm and that's got some amazing locations on it. And then just one of the most powerful things we found is just saying there's a lot of locations around Grantham will have never had a film asked to be shot there. So for them, they're like, whoa, what? Like in London, they're probably quite used to it in places like that and be like, okay, four grand, five grand. But here they're more like, whoa, you want to shoot in our pub or our laundrette? So they'll be like, just come in and film for free. So that's the other way we do it with when it comes to locations. So you can get pretty far with not a lot of money just by asking nicely is what we've found so far yeah at two o'clock i'm doing a, a a no budget filmmaking class for an hour starting from two till three it's on zoom so if any of you watching want to join that look at our website raindance.org and again you'll see uh how you can do that it's part of our lockdown sessions and <laughs> I'm doing the first one do you think that's funny to call it a lockdown session yeah, <laughs> I noticed that name change. <laughs> and then on Thursday evening, we have Kira Ann Pelican, the, um, the writer who studies how you use deep data to create compelling characters to get more people to see your stuff on uh, Facebook and Twitter and so on, which is interesting. Um, so when you enter, you enter competitions a lot. 
Is that right? Yeah, all the time. And what sort of competitions? Uh, we use Film Freeway mainly to enter as many festivals as we can that seem like they suit the sort of films we make. So and we entered have... previously, of course. <laughs> and the average, and then, average length of your shorts are how long, would you say? Probably the 10 minute mark, most of them. Mm -hmm. Recently, however, we've kind of shifted and we've been making a lot more quite short form ones because we know it's a lot of festivals. And I'm not sure if you would agree with this, want shorter than longer sometimes. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of one minute festivals about right now or even some 15 second ones. So we've been concentrating a lot now on doing some of these one minute ones because we can make more in the time that we've got, but still be improving our skills through that. Yeah, so, we've been doing the 15 second Nokia shorts back in 2004, actually, 2003, when the first cell phones came out that took 15 seconds. We partnered with Nokia and we're doing micro shorts. They didn't want to do it at first because they said, how can you do a, a film with a beginning, middle and end in just 15 seconds? But we find that for those kinds of micro shorts, a lot of um, good idea sources looking at stand-up comics because they they set up a situation yeah. and get the payoff right away within very quickly and sometimes i can give you an idea for a short film i don't know if you would agree with that or not no, i definitely agree with that it's like we did a 15 second film that won a few awards called clown car and it was a cut down of another film we had made but it establishes a character waking up you know instantly okay she's been in a car crash what's that threat behind and then we reveal there's this killer clown, but it kind of leaves you wanting more, and but at the same time you still get what's happening, and it starts leaves you a question. You can figure it out, like, oh, did that clown cause a crash, or is he just there, stuff like that. I definitely think it helps you think more about like a free act structure because you've got to start middle, a start, middle, and end all in that time and set it up. So I think it definitely helps, and then you can apply that to your longer form films as well. Yeah, like when I look back at some of our older films of structure, I'm like kind of just is a bit everywhere so sometimes going back to like a short of one minute or 15 second one just to get the grasp on structure again is a really good exercise yeah well carmelo viviani said vine was great for shorts the six second shorts did you ever watch vine the vine show uh, twitter i was aware of vine but i was never really that into it to be honest I know that now TikTok's kind of taking over in its place instead. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, Vine closed down. And James Skinner, who was on on Sunday, he was the other winner at the 60, sexy, the sexy 60 seconds, or was it the <laughs> sexy, sexy seconds? Is congratulating you, Jake, on your, on your short film, which is truly wonderful. Uh, thank you, James. Yeah, I wanted to ask you now, um, you want as many people as possible to see your shorts? Is that... The yeah, that's definitely true, yeah. <laughs> Why do you want so many people to see your shorts? What are you hoping to achieve? Well, I just want to grow an audience. Like, when you make... I've heard a couple of things, like, sayings in the past, like, if you've made a film and no one's seen it, have you made a film? And sayings like that, or art really... Like, what's the point of making it if no one's ever going to enjoy it? And I just get... It just makes me happy when someone sees one of our new films or trailers or something and knowing that they got excited for it or they got invested in it and, you know, helping, you know, giving, bringing enjoyment to people through it. There's just something so satisfying about that, especially when a film gets pretty viral and you see everyone enjoying it. It's mm. one of the best feelings. Mm. Well, look, uh, here's a challenge to you, Jake. Yao Paulo Carvalho, 608, is joining us from Brazil, and he's an actor. Now, how would you make a short film in your confined space with someone in Brazil? Or could you? Huh? Well, you definitely could. I think you could shoot a film in a box room, like, with the right... Yeah, I mean, even some feature films that I've been shot in, like, one location in such a small place, but work for an hour and a half, so... You can definitely shoot something in your house that will captivate in a minute. I mean, I'm currently in the process of writing a couple of shorts to shoot while quarantined. So I guess the first thing is to look around what you've got and you just write stories based on that. You're not going to try and make something where you go to space in your house. So you just got to think realistically. But could you patch in Zhao from 
Brazil, for example, he's an actor in Brazil. Mm -hmm. if you could somehow do them on Skype or hang out or Zoom. Oh, or definitely. Like, story. So how would you do that? Well, a possible story, I, I could think of a short, I mean, just a rough idea off the top of my head, horror short where two characters are over Skype. So one's on the other end, but then a horror setting where the other character suddenly snags or disappears on the other end. And while he's watching, he's wondering where his friend's gone before he disappears after the lights. I mean, that's a very rough, flushed out concept, but you could easily have two characters interacting over it and work in either horror elements or even comedic elements about it all. I could definitely see that working as a short. Cool. Well, well that's fantastic. That's great. Um, and Dreamcoat Films has offered to uh, be a guest on here. So uh, Dreamcoat Films, if you email us at Raindance, we'll get that scheduled in. Uh, as we started doing this, Jake, it's funny. Everyone wants to be a special guest, but you are the special <laughs> guest today. Um, <laughs> how would you describe yourself? Writer, director, producer, filmmaker. How, how when when you meet someone new in a professional, uh -huh. setting, how do, and they say what? What do you say? I always generally say filmmaker. I think cinematography is probably my main passion and love, and that's what I enjoy doing the most on sets. But I've had to have my finger in all the pies, so to speak. With like when you're making films with no money, often it's like you've just got to accept you're going to have to probably direct something or produce something now and again. But I'd say, like, and because of that, it's why I normally would say, oh, I'm a filmmaker, but cinematographer is where I want to be. Okay, well, cool. Um, Raj says here, he lives in uh, Leicester and have been doing what has been discussed. However, I feel that where I live is limited and will eventually hit a ceiling. Do you think you have to eventually move to London? That's what Raj says. He's in Leicester and not that far from you, I don't think. But how yeah. do you think for that, Jake? I think it definitely is a thing. Film industry in this country is based in London. I mean, if you do work remotely, say if you're such a great heir to like Walter Merch, where you could probably get away with working wherever you want and just doing it online based, I'm sure that's a thing. But I feel like it probably is a reality that like you don't necessarily have to live there, but all your work's going to be based around London area. So I'd say that's definitely true. I wouldn't, you can definitely still grow your skills wherever you are. I mean, we've made so many films out here in Grantham and also when I was in Hatfield to uni, like, you know, there's always places near you can use to make films or keep going. And the fact that we have the internet now has helped to just like grown as a lot. I mean, here we are, in this call, which wouldn't have been possible back before, but stuff like that allows you to build up your connections before you're even there. So what I'd probably say is just to try and build as many connections as you can now. So if you did ever move to London, you would be ready and not just there starting with nothing. Mm, mm, mm. But so, I feel like, yeah, it is an eventuality that you probably need to be near London. <laughs> Yeah, but you, you mentioned earlier, I forgot the name of your person that you make films with. What person do you say? That you uh, Michael. Michael. So you would, and Michael lives in Grantham too, I, I assume. Yeah. So, and you, if you moved to London, would he move to London? Uh, I can't answer that for him. He's currently, he's at U, uh, uni now still, whereas I've left, because he's he went a bit later. So he's in Lincoln now, but my group that we make films together with, we're mainly, we're pretty all spread apart. Like a couple of us, like Carmelo and our friend Dan, live more towards London and come up from that area to film. And sometimes we'll go down by train and stuff to shoot down in that area. But, I mean, if I move to London, it'd probably be a case of going on my own currently and just trying to figure it out from there. Right, right, right. And you need a job. The rent's so expensive and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or commuting from a smaller town outside of London that's close enough to train in or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, the point I was trying to make by asking those questions was your team, and you've assembled a team. I think that's a yeah. great start, uh, Jake. Um, and it's those team that you'll probably keep working with on and off yeah. the rest of your career, basically. Yeah, I'd say that's definitely true. I mean, when we all went to uni, I mean, I went to Hertfordshire, some went to Nottingham, some went to Newcastle. So we went as 
far out as we could have gone, but we haven't ever stopped making films. So I don't think, no matter where I am in the world, I'm pretty sure we'd find a way. Yeah, Christian Burnett official says, can't wait to film with you all again. I assume that's someone you know. <laughs> Christian always acts for us, he's great. Okay. It's been a while though. <laughs> hey, just, just a bit of an esoteric question here. You have a very cool color palette. What are your steps to accomplishing that? Uh, well, I mean, during pre-production, we always look at the film and what its story is and what we're trying to tell and get across. So it always comes down to choosing, like, based on the locations, the lighting, colour, and then, obviously, the colour. But a lot of it comes down to production design. For, so we'll try and get... We'll build up our props and costumes that we've got and just try and really match it up and basically just develop it that way. I mean, we try and have a different colour palette every film that really represents it, but I have noticed some of our films look similar in style. I'm not sure if that's good. It's the way I just shoot them now. But, you know, I mean, it's quite a difficult one to answer for me because it's one of those things I sort of just know, do but don't really know how to give a proper answer for how I do it or well, know how to do it. We'll leave the proper answer for the proper art historians um, <laughs> to, uh, or the film critics to, to discuss. We're nearly out of time, Jake. Yeah. If someone was watching this and wanting to start making short films, is there any single one piece of advice you would give them for anyone starting out? For anyone starting out, just to make as much as possible and don't stop no matter what people say. I mean, it's always difficult if you're young and you're at school or you're somewhere where people are going to maybe mock you for doing something like film because they don't or rip into them. But, you know, you're always going to get that. Even, you know, even the big dogs, like the criticism, some feature films get you like, oh, that's pretty harsh, but you just keep going and have to block that out. Yeah. Any sort of camera that people need to save up for or can you shoot it on your cell phone? You can shoot um, anything, your phone, whatnot. I mean, the thing is, when we started, like, it is changing always so much. When we started, we had, you know, flip cameras, those old HD, or barely HD, little pocket cams that had all automatic, no controls. We started with that and used it for, like, two or three years, and it was just keep making filming. It's like, don't even, didn't even care about the quality of the image. It was just about making stuff. So I'd say that's the most important thing, really. I but if there's any... I wore out about three of those uh, flip cameras, uh, the little flip, the little cameras. I know, what did you call it? The flip cameras, the flip. Yeah, the flip HD and all that, and the yeah. Badoo camera. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Josh says, should you use your phone or a digital camera? How would you answer that, uh, Jake? I mean, if you have access to a digital camera, I'd use that and start learning like what ISO means, aperture, all the settings. So that way, when it comes to, you know, you got to, Eventually, you're going to want to leave uh, cameras like your phone behind when you move on to bigger cameras because you can afford it or whatever. But when you're starting off, you just want to, you want to use the best camera that you can get that's available to you. And I don't mean like if you've got money, go out and buy a red or something. Like if you have a little, like a couple hundred quid, just you buy what you can and just learn on that. I mean, you can learn composition on any camera that exists because... Yeah. It all they all take an image and you can yeah. frame an image no matter what the camera is so you can still learn what exposure composition lighting what it all means and does no matter what camera you have to begin with so just use what the best camera you can get for your money at the time is well that's really good advice jake we're just about out of time i want to remind everyone that tomorrow we have kira and pelican the um the script doctor and script analyst who was able to predict the box office of Hollywood uh, blockbusters by looking at the characters in those upcoming films and comparing it to the digital Facebook data scraping techniques that people at Cambridge Analytica, Analytica use. Very, very interesting. Um, so she'll be with us tomorrow. And then I'm doing a lockdown session at two o'clock today. If you're interested in that, look at our uh, website raindance.org and Jake we have a featured blog on you and uh, Bailey who's joining us she's going to link to that afterwards and Jake I want to thank you so much for your time today I know you're busy with all that editing and um, 
that and Harvey has joined us, our filmmaker in residence. We're very, very aware of your work. And so too are the many, many people watching us right now. And they, like me personally, and Rain Dance in general, will be following and tracking your career with great interest. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sounds brilliant. Please keep in touch. I will do. Thank you for everything you've done for the film community as a whole. Well, sweet, you don't need to say that, but thank you for saying <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Jake. Thanks so much. I'm going to end it now. And this will Thank be after our story. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.